Group work over limits. Limits are very important in calculus. And so I want to make sure you understand how to do the problems on this. So first off, I want to talk about um, what is the domain of the function. The function, the first function we have is, um, and let me make this bigger so we can actually see it better. So the first function we happen to have is f of x equals x squared minus 2x minus 8 all over x minus 4. And the domain of that is that the denominator cannot be 0. So I can't have x minus 4 equal to 0. And so x cannot equal 4. So my domain is all real numbers except for 4. And the easiest way to write this, if I insert an equation, I can write this in parentheses notation going from negative infinity with uh, 4 to infinity. So there's my domain. Now what do we want to do is we want to investigate the behavior. And I realize that we do probably don't have enough for you really to see what's going on. So you might need to add some more in there. I'm going to use Desmos to help me with this. So I'm going to go into Desmos. I'm going to type in my equate, my function, which my function is f of x equals x squared, x squared minus 2x minus 8 divided by x minus 4. And then I can actually have it evaluate the function for me by doing a table. Uh, now what else section I use the table? I use just f of and I can't remember the numbers we're using. So the first number we have is 3.8. So we're start with that and I'll just type in 3.8 inside my function. And it'll tell me the answer is 5.8. So I've got the function value of 5.8 when x is 3.8. I'm gonna now put in 3.9 instead. Nice thing about this is all I gotta do is change that eight into a nine and I'll tell me it's 5.9. I'm just filling in this table as I go with these numbers and I want 3.99 and I go back to Desmos and I put a 3.99 in there and I see I get 5.99. Now, again, this is probably not enough numbers. We probably could have done with another one. So I could actually insert a row below this and just do one more. Let's do 3.999. You may not have known to do this, but you could have thought about doing this. But if you didn't notice that, another one might give me a little bit more information. I get 5.999. Now, what I notice here is that those numbers are getting bigger, but they're not getting very, very big. And they look like they're kind of heading towards a very specific number of, let's say, 6. Now, let's try it with on the other side. So let's try 4.01. So I'll change this number to 4.01. And I get 6.01. And then we'll do this again. We'll put in 4.1. And I get 6.1. And we'll put in 4.2. And I get 6.2. And again, if you want to, you could put in one more number to really get in a good idea. So let's insert one more row above. And we'll put in 4.001. So I'll go back to Desmos. Type in 4.001. And I get 6.001. So again, it looks like... If I look at this, I'm going from 6.2 to 6.1 to 6.01 to 6.001. That looks like we're getting closer to the number 6. So it looks like as x is getting closer to 4, um, my function is getting closer to... is getting closer to 6.
also noticing that these numbers aren't getting bigger. I mean, if they were getting bigger, you'd really see them become really big numbers, but they're all staying right around that number six on both sides. Um, and then I want to look at the plot of that. And if I look at the plot of this, the plot looks like a line. And if I were to just zoom out just a little bit on this, just so I could see a little bit of idea of what's going on there, I can see that as I'm heading closer to four here, I'm getting closer and closer and closer to the number six. If you think about coming up from here, that's hard to do on here. Um, but let me go ahead and take a picture of this graph. So we'll just do a screenshot of this. Um, let's do a screenshot. Because I only want a little bit, I'm going to use snippet. I just don't want the whole screen. I just want that little bit there. Ah, where'd it go? New one. Let's do a new one. And I'm going to do drawing. And I want to get that value right around there. And then we'll go ahead and put this into the graph we happen to have. So if I look at my graph, I'm looking like this. So again, what I'm looking at doing is, and I'm actually going to take this into this program for just a moment, just so I can draw a little bit easier on here. If I were to come up from, let's say, 3.5, and actually I'm going to draw a little differently here. Let me just use lines. If I come up from, let's say, 3.5, and then I go over here, I'm noticing I'm getting close to a Y value of about 5.5. And if I come up from here, and then come over, I'm getting again up from there. And if I come up here again and come over, I'm getting closer to the number six. And if I come from this side and come over, I'm getting a number there. And you can't really just look at one number, you have to look at a trend. So if I look here, I now see I'm getting closer there. If I come up from a number close to four, but not at four, Again, notice my Y value is close to number six. And that's really what a limit is all about. If I go back to Desmos, one thing I should point out to you is that if I go up along here, you can actually go along your line. You can click on the line. You can see what values you're getting. So you can see what numbers you're getting as you're getting closer and closer and closer to the number four. And when I'm really close to it, I notice that when I'm right on four, oops, and get there perfectly. I'm undefined. And that's again because I can't be the number four because it makes the denominator zero. So even Desmos sees it's undefined. You can't tell that there's a, uh, a hole there, but you're kind of away from it. You can kind of see a hole instead of a solid dot. So that's kind of the graph looks like what that's doing to me. Okay, so going back now to this discussion, I'm seeing that it's asking me, does this support your conclusion? And yes, it does, because of what I was just showing you, I am getting closer to the number six. So I want to ask then the question is, why is it linear? And the really reason it's linear is if I were to actually factor this numerator and cancel, and I were to factor that numerator and cancel it, what I would notice I would get is, I would get f of x equals x minus plus two as um, as we cancel, so we factor and cancel. And x f of x equals x plus two is a line. So that's why you see a line there. And that's why it looks like a linear line. It's because you do in fact get x plus two. You have that hole there, which you can't see on this graph here because we just took a picture of it, but there's a hole there because we can't actually be the number four. So, as we're tending to four from the left, we're heading to number six. As And the limit as x goes to four with a little negative sign there is six. As we're tending to four from the right, we're again heading to number six. And symbolically, as x goes to four with a little plus sign, f of x means x goes to six from the right. We also, I mean, x goes to four from the right, we get a six. That tells me since we're going to the same values, we're going to number six.
So symbolically, we'd write this as a limit as x goes to 4 of f of x is 6. Notice that just because we're saying we're 6, we can't actually be anything at x equals 4 because it would be undefined there. I'm going to do the same thing. We want to graph this piecewise function and see what that's doing. A piecewise function means that when x is less than or equal to 2, we equal to x squared plus 3. When x is bigger than 2, we're equal to 3x plus 2. So I'm going to go back to Desmos. I'll clear these two out. I don't need those anymore. And my f of x is equal to, and the way you put in a piecewise function in uh, Desmos is you first start off with a curly bracket. Then you say x is less than or equal to 2, comma, and that was going to be x squared plus 2. And then we also want x when x is greater than 2, we want it to be 3 to the x, 3 to the x, plus, I have to go back, I don't remember exactly what it is, so 3 to the x plus 2. So it's x squared plus 3, and 3 to the x plus 2. So 3 to the x plus 2, and this one was x plus 3. I'm going to... Go ahead and close that. And I seem to have an error. Oh, I put a comma in here by accident. This is actually supposed to be a colon. I forgot that. That's supposed to be a colon. And that comma should also be a colon. I apologize. I had that backwards. So now we can see our piecewise function. I'll zoom out just a tiny bit so you can see a little bit more. So when we're less than negative 2, we look like x squared plus 3. And when we're bigger than 2, we look like 3 to the x plus 2. Again, I want to evaluate this function at certain values. I want to evaluate it at 1, 1 1.5, 1.99, 1.999, and so forth. So let's go ahead back to Desmos. We can have Desmos do this, f of 1 is 4. f of 1.5 is 3.25, or 5.25, sorry. Uh, 1.9. This is the beauty of Desmos. You can just change these numbers. You can see it's 6.61. And then 1.99. And all I got to do now is just put a 9 after this one. Just keep adding 9s. I can actually also copy this and paste it over in my answer. So that's 6.901, 1.999, that 9 on there. And that way you don't have to actually um, type all this and remember all those decimal places. You can just copy them and paste them. And then 1.9999. So add one more 9 on there. So what it looks like what we're doing is we're letting us get closer and closer and closer to the number 2, but not actually being the number 2. And we can see these numbers are getting from 4 to 5.25 to 6.61 to 6.96 to 6.996 to 6.9996. So it looks like we're getting closer and closer and closer to the number maybe 7. Now let's see what happens if we go the other way. So we're going to start at 3. We get 29, and then we're going to start at 2.5. So the one numbers we're getting from below, now we're coming from above, and we're going to 17 point, big number, lots of decimal places, I should say, not big number, but lots of decimal places, uh, 2.1, we get 12 point something, 2.01, get 11 point something, 2.001, we get still 11 point something, and then 2.0001, zero we get again really close to 11. 
So we notice we're getting from 29 to 17 to 12 to 11.09 to 11.09 to 11.0009. 11 so it looks like we're just kind of slowly getting into the number 11. So as we come from the left, we look like we're getting closer and closer and closer to the number seven. And we're coming from the right, it looks like we're getting closer and closer and closer to the number 11. So what this is saying to me is that we're coming from one side, we're coming along, the other side we're coming along, and if we're coming from the right, we're gonna have to drop off a cliff, and if we're coming from the left, we're gonna run into a wall. So we have this problem where we aren't gonna to get to the same numbers because one direction we're coming this direction, one direction we're coming towards this number, and we're totally missing each other. So it kind of says to me that as we're getting closer and closer and closer to number two, it looks like the limit doesn't actually exist because we're not heading to the same place. If you're thinking about driving down a road, if you're driving down a road and you had this problem, you'd either be going off a cliff or you'd be going into a wall and you wouldn't like either one of those things to happen. So in order for a limit to exist, it looks like the limit from the left must equal the limit from the right. And that's really what I wanted you to get out of this concept. Now let's try another function. This is y is equal to one plus one over x to the x. So again, we'll go back to Desmos. We'll clear these two out. We're gonna draw f of x equals one plus one divided by x to the x. Let me make sure I typed it in right. 1 plus 1 over x to the x. That's what we wanted. And it looks like we're going to let it be 10, then 100, then 1,000, then 10,000, then 100,000. So it looks like we're letting the numbers get really big. So when I let that happen, when we're letting the x get really big, I got 2.5 something when I had it 10. Now if I make it 100, I notice I get 2.7 something again. So I get 2.59, then 2.7 something. Then if I let it be 1,000, I again notice I'm going to get 2.7 something. So we started at 2.6 almost. We're now at 2.7. No, we're still at 2.7. Now let's let it be 100,000, um, 10,000. Add another zero in there. Again, I'm noticing I'm getting closer and closer and closer to the number 2.7 something. Let's do 10,000. And if you wanted to, you could keep going with this. You don't have to do just the numbers I gave you. You could do certainly way more numbers than this and see kind of where it's heading. But I'm now noticing that the first one, two, three, three decimal places are exactly the same. And so it looks to me like we're getting closer and closer and closer to the number 2.7182 something, something, something. That like, looks like it's getting closer to. If I were to write this in limit notation, again, I'm gonna insert an equation here and I can insert a limit as X goes to infinity, which is what we're kind of doing. We're letting X get bigger and bigger and bigger. So we're letting X get really, really big, meaning we're letting it go to infinity. And that looks like it's equal to 2.7182 dot, dot, dot. Cause it keeps going on forever and ever, at least as far as we know. And you may recognize this limit. This is actually the number E. You've seen E in other classes before. This is the number E. And that's actually where that number E comes from, by the way. Um, so let's do another one. This function is E to the, and I need to make this even bigger because I really can't see what that says. This is two to the E to the 2.56x over one plus 1.2 e to the 2.56x. So let's type that into Desmos now. So we have f of x to e to 2.56x divided by, oops, divided by, I don't remember things very well, but one plus 1.12. 1 plus 1.12 e to the 2.56x. 
All right, and so now again, we're going to fill in the table, and this is using things numerically here and see what happens. Um, on Desmos, you can do all of these. Some of these you can't on your calculator. So we're going to put in 0, then 1, then 2, then 20, then 200, then 250, and see just kind of what's happening as the numbers are getting bigger. So we'll do f of 0, and we get that number there. So we get 0.47 something. And then we're going to let x equal 1. And we get 8.3 something. And we're going to let it be 2. And we just get 8.888 8 something, something something. And then we're going to do 20. And again, we get 8 point. Oh, wait, I'm sorry. It's supposed to be 1.2, 2, not 1.12. I apologize. So let's do this again. And so when I get 20 in there, I get 0. 0.833333. Let's go. We do the other ones. We do do the 2 and the 1 and the 0 again. Sorry about that. something and again you're not looking at just one number you're looking at a trend of where you're heading so that's why we have to do this table and keep changing the values because you're kind of looking to see where you're going what's happening as you get closer or bigger or whatever you happen to be doing um, in this case we're getting closer to the number infinity though it takes you a really long time to get there um, and we can go ahead and put the 200 in there And now we get 8.33333, it looks like repeating. And if we, if we do the 250, I'm sure we're gonna get similar thing happening here because it looks like everything's starting to repeat itself. So based on what you see in the table, what do you think is happening to f of x as, getting, as x is getting larger and larger and larger? It looks like we're going to that number of 0.8333333. When we plot it on Desmos, we can see we're kind of heading off to that same number. We're getting to be kind of a horizontal line. We're just slowly being just a horizontal line at just right below one. So the graph does do that. The graph shows us. Um, and if you really want to know for sure it does, then you can just kind of click in here and you can move along, and as you're on that graph, you can see we're getting to 8.3333333. And you can see that kind of happening. You can zoom out, you can change your window, so you can actually make, um, you can make X be all the way up to, let's say 200. And then you can see when I do that, and I go along here, you're getting those same values. So we are confirming that we are doing the same numbers, getting closer and closer to that 8.333. If you want to even make it bigger than that, you can go to 2000. And again, you're going to see us getting closer and closer and closer to that number. And Desmos is just as kind of, can't go any higher than 250. So, so we can see that's what's happening. The graph does confirm it. And as we tending to that, we are getting close to that number. And we can now say the limit is 0.83333 repeating, which means it's some fraction that we could find out what that fraction is as we get farther into um, algebraic methods. Um, plot some experiment, um, exponential functions and see kind of what's happening. I will let you know that as x goes to in negative infinity, g of x will go to infinity. As limit as x goes to infinity, g of x will actually go to zero. Um, Actually, I'm sorry. I don't know why I have these on here. That's not right. As x goes to, to infinity, negative infinity, g of x will go to zero. And this one will go to infinity. There we go. That's correct. Um, as long as a is between zero and one. And you can graph those up and see those. Um, every exponential function um, has a horizontal asymptote. That's true. None of them have vertical asymptotes. Um, they will, um, none of them, there are none that have horizontal asymptotes. That actually is 
false um, and no have a vertical asymptote that's actually true. Um, here I want to kind of write down some of the limiting statements here. And I've kind of already done that. If I notice this as x gets closer and closer and closer to negative 2, we're going to follow this line along. We're just going to keep following that line along, and we just head off up to positive infinity. So that looks like the limit as x goes to negative 2 um, is infinity. Um, if I come to negative 2 from the other side from the right, as I come down and down here, it looks like I'm just following this line along, and I'm going to head down to negative infinity. As we head to positive 1 from the right, again, as I'm following this line along, I'm going to go up, and I'm just going to keep heading up, and I'm just going to head to positive infinity. If I follow this line along, and I'm along this line, and I'm heading along here towards 1 from the left, I head down to negative infinity. If I were to come down this graph and head off to positive infinity, I notice I'm going to kind of head towards the number 2. And as I head to negative infinity along this graph, I look like I'm also heading to y equal 2. So I get those different limiting factors. And that gives me my, my vertical and horizontal asymptotes. Um, the last thing is to evaluate these. I think the best way to do this is to graph them. So we're going to go ahead and graph up x plus 2. Get rid of these. y equals x plus 2 divided by divided by x plus 6, I think it was. Let me make sure. Oh, x plus 4 over x minus 6. Apologize. And if I were to just go to a standard window here, you can kind of see we're heading, as I follow this curve off, as we are head to, towards 6, we're going to go down to negative infinity. As I head towards 6 from this side, I'm going to head to positive infinity. So it looks like, as I'm following that graph along, that we would not have a um, a function. So D and E means does not exist. We don't have a limit, I should say. Same thing here, 3x squared plus 4 over x squared minus 4. We'll do 3x squared. Plus 4 over x minus 4. I believe that was what our function was. 3x squared plus 4 over x squared minus 4. Sorry. And again, as we're heading in this case, we are heading towards the number 2. So I'm heading towards the number 2 here. I notice this graph, if I follow along, is going to head on up, go to positive infinity. This graph, as I head to negative to positive 2, it looks like it's heading down to negative infinity. So that tells me my limit doesn't exist because then again, not going to hit the same number. We're heading off into two different directions. We're going way off into nowhere then. So that's why that one does not exist. Um, we'll look at x plus 4 over x squared minus 6. x. So x plus 4. over x squared minus 6, I believe it was. Let me make sure. Um, x plus 4 over x squared minus 6x. And again, this time we are heading towards 0. So as I'm heading towards 0 on this side, I'm heading to negative infinity. As I'm heading towards 0 from the left, I'm heading to positive infinity. So again, that tells me we're never going to hit each other. We're never going to match up. And so the limit doesn't exist. Um, same thing with all of these. You're going to kind of do that same idea. We're going to have 4x cubed plus 4x squared minus 3x. So we have 4x cubed minus 4x squared uh, plus 4, I think it was. No, minus 3x. So 4x cubed plus 4x squared minus 3x. Over top of our denominator in this case is 5x squared minus 6x cubed. And again, my limit I want to do in this case is I want to head towards 0. So as we're heading towards 0, 
we notice again as I'm following this line along, we're just going to be following this line. I'm going to head up to pause infinity. On the other side from the right, we're going to head along this line and we're going to suddenly be heading to negative infinity. So again, that limit does not exist. Now let's do 3x squared times e to the negative 2x. And it was minus 2x. I knew that. And again, in this case, we want to look to see what happens as x heads to infinity. So we're letting x's get bigger and bigger and bigger. And as we head bigger and bigger and bigger, we're going to look like we're heading towards 0, which is going along that line. So that's what it looks like it's heading to. So that's why it's 0. And then 3x squared minus times e to the negative 2x. This time, we're going to head to negative infinity. So we're heading towards x being smaller numbers, which means we're heading along this line. And it looks like we're heading to positive infinity. And then the last thing we want to do is we're going to have a function that has um, x goes to infinity of gx plus equals 2. Um, g of 0 is 8. Uh, the limit is x goes to negative infinity of g of x equals 5. g of negative 6 is 10. Um, the limit as x goes to negative 2 of g of x equals infinity. Limit as x goes to 2 from the right of g of x equals negative infinity. And the limit as x goes to negative 4 of g of x is infinity. And from those, I want you to identify all the vertical and horizontal asymptotes. Well, the horizontal asymptotes are where we're heading towards a number. So I'm looking at this as x goes to infinity, g of x is going to head to 2. But tell me y equals 2 is my horizontal asymptote because as x gets bigger and bigger and bigger, we're going to head to 2. As x gets really, really small, we're going to head to 5. So that tells me y equals 5 is another horizontal asymptote. These are telling me that as x goes to 2 from either side, we're going to head to infinity and negative infinity. And as, head, as t heads to um, negative 4, we're going to head to infinity. So that tells me that we have vertical asymptotes at t equals 2 and t equals negative 4. And then I just want you to sketch a graph of this. So I just want you to think about what this might look like. It's not a perfect graph. You don't need a calculator for it. You actually just need a piece of paper. So here's my piece of paper. I first need to have an axis. So let me get an axis in here. And I'm going to get better axes, but I'm just going to try to draw one. Um, let me move that one. Whoops. Let me do that. Uh, let me move that line down because I don't think I need that much at the top. All right. And then I notice again, going back to my information, that g of 0 is 8 and g of negative 6 is 10. So that tells me that if I were to put on some axes there, some tick marks there, 2, 4, 6, 8, 10. Um, and if you want to put numbers on there, you can. And again, when g, when g was 0, when x g of 0 is 8, so going back to my graph here, 2, 4, 6, 8, I need to put a dot at 8, at 0, 8. So I'll just put a dot there. Let me make my dots a different color. And then the other one, other dot we also have is that g of negative 6 is 10. So g of negative 6, so I need some tick marks on here for that. So again, I'll put a dot at negative 6, 10. So the dot just says I need to go through those lines, those points. Those are things I have to go through. Um, the other thing to do is let's look to see where were our horizontal asymptotes. And we said we had a horizontal asymptote at 2 and 5, and vertical asymptotes at t equals 2 and negative 4. So let's kind of draw those in there for us just to help us with that sketching. So negative 2 t equals negative 2. We had a dashed line. So we have a dashed line at 
I'm sorry, I don't remember things very well. So at t equals two and negative four, we have a dashed vertical lines. So at t at negative four, we have a dashed vertical line. And at t equal two, which I forgot to put those in there. T equals two. Line. And then horizontal, we had some horizontal asymptotes at two and five. We'll come back here, we'll draw some horizontal asymptotes at two and five. So at two and five. All right, so now we've kind of got an idea of kind of where things are going. We also can look back a little bit and see that as we're heading towards negative, um, heading to negative two from the left, I'm sorry, from two from the left, we're going towards infinity. When we're heading to negative four, we're heading towards infinity. And we're heading from two to the right, we head to negative infinity. So that tells me a little bit more about this. I can now draw in a lot more information. I know I'm heading to negative to positive infinity here. So I kind of look up like this. I'm heading to positive infinity on this side and positive infinity as I head towards two from the right, from the left. And I'm heading to negative infinity from, um, as we're heading to two from the right. And there's my sketch. And again, it's not a perfect graph, but it gives me an idea of what I'm doing. And that's it for this group work.